In this video, I'm comparing and reviewing eight of the world's most popular brands of professional gouache paints. I'll show you swatches, test paintings, and talk about the differences in prices, opacity, and consistency across all brands. I've shared a separate student grade gouache brand comparison video with a few of the popular student grade gouaches, and I also have a ton of information on my blog, including individual reviews. In this video, I'm presenting the brands in alphabetical order, and there are also chapter markers in the description if you want to jump to a specific brand. And by the way, this video took over five weeks to record and edit, so I would super appreciate a thumbs up before you go. If you love gouache content, make sure you subscribe and share it with your friends. All right, let's jump in. First up in the professional artist grade gouache category is Dollar Rowney Designer's Gouache. At $5.95 per tube on average, it's the cheapest professional brand on my list. I'm especially interested in this brand because it's made relatively locally and I prefer to shop local. Dollar Rowney has added calcium carbonate to their gum arabic binder to improve the brightness, opacity, and paint flow. And if this term sounds familiar, then yep, you guessed it. It's the same ingredient used in chalk and in many, many other industries. It's like a more powerful version of titanium white, except it doesn't necessarily desaturate the pigment. Usually it helps improve vibrancy in the pigments. And I've heard it also can help with the shelf life, but we'll see. There was no weird binder separation happening, which was a huge bonus. For the first time ever, I also bought a metallic gouache because the copper just looked so appealing. And I'm happy to share that it is indeed very shiny, which is interesting because typically gouache is extremely matte. I chose a custom set of colors. I didn't want another set of three primaries, so I had a little more fun choosing these. But I still stuck with as many light fast options as I could. I noticed while swatching that the color was incredibly vibrant and opaque. Unfortunately, their list of red color options don't contain any very light fast reds. So rather than buy something I know won't be light fast, I opted for the reliable Burnt Sienna. It's a dull, earthy red, but it works fine in mixes, especially Scottish landscapes. In terms of consistency, the paint is very soft and creamy. It's actually one of the best consistencies I've tried. Despite the fact that they add calcium carbonate, the yellow and thalo blues were particularly transparent compared to the rest. They have a really strong tinting strength, which you can see here as I mix the greens and turquoises, but if you want to get truly opaque color, you do have to add white. Having really high pigment load and really high tinting strength is super important when you add white. That's pretty much the only way I know how to avoid that kind of chalky pastel look in the final painting. Some of the cheaper brands don't have as high of a pigment load, so you add more and more and more white and the overall painting feels a little bit more dull, more desaturated, and that kind of pastel chalky look that a lot of people describe. I try very hard not to judge a gouache by its price because you can get some really good ones for affordable price. And this is definitely the case. I'm still shocked that it's so much less expensive than the rest of the professional brands. Of course, I still need to see how the light fast test will go over the next few months, but since I chose more of the light fast options they had, I'm hoping for the best. One thing I tried to do in all of the paintings was test out how it felt to fill in large areas of color. In this case, it's kind of a gradient from light blue to deep blue from top to bottom. And it was so much easier, so much better than the Miyahimi and the Karandash and the other ones that I've, re that I've previously showed you. Filling in this huge area took no time at all, and it was super easy to get a nice soft gradient. 
if I compare this to the cheaper brands, it's a thousand times better. Next, I'm going to talk about Daniel Smith, which had some issues. <laughs> so I really want to emphasize the fact that for this low price, you get a very high performing gouache. One of the best feelings is when you actually forget you're using paint and you just kind of flow and the vision in your mind just falls onto the paper. That's one of the things I felt while using this gouache. It didn't resist my brush. It didn't get gooey or sticky. It didn't dry out as fast as some of the others and it was just a joy to use. In late 2022, Daniel Smith launched their first line of gouache paint. And when I first started using watercolors back in 2015, 2016, I fell in love with Daniel Smith's watercolors. So I had really high hopes for the gouache. I bought the primary set, which includes five colors. And at $11.18 per tube, this gouache is the third most expensive on my list. It's basically a direct competitor with the Schmincke and Holbein and Mgram, which are the most expensive. Like most professional lines of gouache, the binder is made of gum arabic, and I believe it has a bit of dextrin in it based on how it felt to paint with, which I'll explain soon. I asked the company if it's vegan friendly, and they said, yep, it's completely vegan friendly, except for the colors that contain ivory black, which is a very common color, and you find it in most brands of gouache. So you can avoid those colors and get a totally vegan set. Straight out of the tube, this gouache is very thick. It's highly opaque and the color is extremely vibrant. Although Pyrrole Red wouldn't be my first choice in a set of primaries, I actually appreciated it in the end because it's a bit more opaque than some of the cooler reds that I would usually get. I mentioned that I suspect there's a bit of dextrin or at least something else in this binder than just gum arabic because it does dry out rather quickly and it has a bit of, not a huge amount, but a bit of gumminess or stickiness. Definitely not even close to the cheaper brands, the Hemi or the Caran d'Ache or any of the really, really sticky ones. But when I was doing my mixing chart, I found it was actually challenging to get the colors to thoroughly mix and blend properly without taking extra time. Like I wasn't trying to rush it or do anything differently than the other brands. It's just that the final colors looked a little more streaky than what I expected. But that's easy enough to work around. You know, as soon as you realize something like that, you just adjust your technique slightly. And I was able to do that in the painting process. I felt that it was a little bit harder to fill in large areas with this paint just because it had that slight stickiness. You had to, you, you either have to load up the brush with a lot more color or touch a bit of water into it, which of course is pretty normal for gouache. When the, the consistency has that slight stickiness or resistance to it, it just makes it a little bit harder to find that perfect water ratio. One good thing about this kind of consistency is that it's really easy to get dry brush textures. So when I add this glittering effect on the water, it's like just dusting it over the surface. It's not creating big goopy marks. It's so easy. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Years ago, my very first set of gouache paint was Holbein. I remember going to the store, seeing it there, and thinking, huh, that looks kind of fun. But it was the same time that I was also really getting into watercolor and oils. So I was kind of jumping all over the place, and occasionally my gouache set sat unused for months. Unfortunately, the old cap design meant that if you didn't perfectly close it and get rid of all the gunked up gouache on it, it didn't properly seal, and a few of my tubes turned rock hard. So it's a lesson learned. And back then, I really had no idea what I was doing with gouache, but I remember it felt a little bit stiff. But I always assumed that was just how all gouache was. And then eventually, I switched to Windsor & Newton, and things changed. <laughs> we'll get into that later. But once again, going into this test, I wanted to give it a totally fair chance and comparison to all the other gouaches. And again, focusing on the opacity and consistency. Straight out of the tube, the gouache is extremely silky and creamy and just a oh, wonderful texture. But as soon as you start painting with it, you realize, okay, it's got a bit more body to it than I originally thought. It's one of the most opaque and powerful gouaches I've ever tried, but it does have a slight stiffness to it. It's not that that's a bad thing, it's just something that you have to get used to. In my mind, Holbein is excellent for anyone who likes to layer their gouache, especially if you're using light colors over dark colors. With very little effort, you can mix beautiful flat color. You don't really have to worry about streaks in your mixes as much as, say, the Daniel Smith I just showed you. So although they say it's pure gum Arabic binder, there may be something else that kind of helps with that in the gouache. With an average price of $12.67 per tube, it is in the higher price range, but I feel you get what you pay for. Honestly, it's just such a joy to paint with because you can rely on the opacity and it's not super sticky or gummy like some of the other gouaches. Just based on the power of opacity and colors I can mix, I feel like they use a really, really high, if not one of the highest pigment loads in their gouache. Maybe there's also a calcium carbonate or something that enhances the vibrancy. And again, that is a super important factor when it comes to layering. I'm using a set of very vibrant primaries. But if you've ever shopped for Holbein gouache, you know that they have so many gorgeous colors to choose from. I chose these because they're considered more light fast. Plus, I absolutely love PR122. It's one of my all-time favorite colors, especially for mixing. And although the yellow and the red are slightly more transparent, they have such a high tinting strength that even when I mix with white, I can still get a strong color. As I mentioned, I'm trying not to add too much water to my gouache while doing all these tests in order to test the consistency of each brand and compare them properly. That does make it a little trickier, and I could easily add water to any of them to make them flow better. But when you find a gouache that actually flows nicely without the need for a lot of water, you know you have a good product. <laughs> That allows you to keep the opacity strong, and again, for layering, that's necessary. And it means that you're not compromising the integrity of the binder, so you know you'll have a nice adhesion to the paper. Once again, I asked the company if their paint is vegan-friendly, and a few of the colors are not, because they either contain bone black or oxgall, which is an animal byproduct used to improve paint flow. You may have heard of oxgall because it's commonly used in watercolors, and it's included in a few of the brands, so I've listed all of the colors that include those ingredients on the accompanying blog post review. So if you're interested in a certain brand and just want to check whether it's vegan friendly or if certain colors are vegan friendly, just double check the blog posts. So overall, I'd say Holbein is one of my favorites because it's super opaque, vibrant. It feels very silky when you're painting with it. Once you get the perfect water ratio down, you can get the paint to flow very easily over the paper. And again, layering is a breeze with this paint. Thank you. 
I've used M. Graham's watercolors and enjoyed the fact that they never fully dry out in the pan. The reason for this magical feature is that they add blackberry honey to the gum arabic binder. Honey is a natural humectant, meaning it helps keep the paint moist. So when I heard they also add honey to their gouache, I was very curious how this would affect it. Would it help the paint hold onto its precious moisture? Would it help improve the flow? Let's find out. At $10.81 average per tube, it's on the upper end of the price spectrum, but not as bad as some of them. Out of the tube, the paint feels super soft and creamy. While mixing, I was pleasantly surprised by how easy it was to create flat colors. Like truly flat colors. During all of these mixing tests, I look out for whether the paint clogs up my brush hairs quickly or not. When the paint sticks to the hairs, it can easily build up and then it makes it more difficult to mix clean color. It's a joy when the paint glides easily like this. It also means I'm able to fill large areas of color and get more even gradients without adding a lot of water. Before long, I was just enjoying the process of painting. I was lost in the flow and kind of forgetting that I was supposed to be reviewing a paint which to be honest is probably one of the best compliments I could give. The colors feel really opaque and M. Graham says they don't add any extra fillers. It's just packed with a ton of pigment. I guess the honey does help the moisture content in the gouache because it did maintain a good flow. I could extend the reach of each brush stroke farther than some of the other brands. Even if you just take this one area of water as an example, filling it in was so much easier with this paint than most of the other brands I've reviewed. And again, strong opacity is ideal because it allows you to layer light colors easily over the dark colors. There are rumors that M. Graham gouache turns moldy faster than the other gouache if it's kept in a stay wet palette, and people think it's because of the honey in the binder. I can't confirm that. I am doing my own mold tests, which I mentioned earlier, and at the end of the video I'll talk a little bit more about this. After the painting, I let my gouache dry out on the mixing tray just to see how it would hold up. I thought maybe the honey would keep it moist for longer, but it dried just like all my other gouache. I pretty much only use gouache straight from the tube anyway, so I wouldn't really let it dry out, but it was just an interesting experiment. Honestly, I can't say enough good things about this gouache. It's not the most expensive, I mean it's not the cheapest either, but it's such a joy to paint with, I think it's absolutely worth the money. It has quickly moved up my list of favorites, and speaking of which, I do have a blog post dedicated to ranking all of these gouache brands, and as I continue to try new gouache, I will update the rankings. This will be a rather quick review because, to be honest, I did not enjoy this gouache at all. At $8 per tube, it's not that much less expensive than some of my favorites that far outperform it. Royal Talons uses Dectrin as the majority of their binder and you can really feel it. If you aren't familiar with Dextrin, it's basically a starchy glue and it's used in a lot of different products and paints. And nothing is wrong with it except that it does have a peculiar trait. It's called thixotropy, and it means that the paint has to be moving in order to flow smoothly. Look it up, it's the weirdest thing. <laughs> so if your paint contains a lot of dextrin, you will really have to get your brush moving to get it to move across the paper. So this Royal Talons gouache is the stickiest gouache I have ever used, even more than the cheaper student grade brands. There's no avoiding it. You absolutely have to add water in order to get it to flow. Luckily, it does boast a high opacity, so you can still layer your colors. And the colors in this set are pretty good for creating a wide range of mixes. But the painting process was just not enjoyable at all. It was a total slog to get the paint to move, so filling in larger areas of flat color or gradients was a big struggle. 
I literally had to stand up while I painted the water gradient to get a vigorous rhythm with my brush and make the paint move. Obviously, I'm able to create a painting with this, but there's just too much hassle, and I personally would not recommend this gouache. Based on the comments I receive on my other gouache videos, I've realized that not a lot of people have used the Shinhan gouache. I've shared my first impressions of this gouache in the past, so I know it's not completely new to my usual viewers, but this gouache is one of my favorites. Shinhan says they don't add any fillers and that it's vegan friendly except for the colors that contain PBK9 Bone Black, which by the way is the same across all brands. I have here a custom set of five colors, and I use them in my travel palette quite often. This gouache has one of the best consistencies of all the gouache I've tried. Some of the colors are more transparent than others, as usual, but straight out of the tube, it's creamy and most of them are quite opaque, even some of the yellows. And I've never experienced any binder separation with this brand, which is a big bonus. So straight out of the tube, when it's fully opaque, it doesn't feel sticky at all. It feels very silky. Probably the most enjoyable aspect is that I don't experience the usual brush drag with this gouache, and my brush hairs don't get clogged up, so I'm able to mix really clean color. To be honest, I'm amazed at how well this gouache performs for the lower price. So that combined is why this gouache is one of my all-time favorites. The second to last brand on my list is none other than Schmincke Horadam Gouache, the most expensive brand by far but for a while now, it's been a contender for my absolute favorite brand of gouache. However, in this review, I will be discussing why that might be changing. With a price tag of nearly $17 per tube, or maybe more depending where you buy it, this is the most expensive gouache I own. And as a popular commercial brand, I believe it's the most expensive in the world before you start looking into the world of quality handmade gouaches, which can be very pricey. So for such a high price, you would hope that the gouache is really good. And I can honestly say that yes, this is the best gouache I've ever tried. Out of all the brands of gouache in this comparison, the opacity and consistency of the Schmincke Horadam are unparalleled. Despite how much I love it, one thing that has been making me question my loyalty to this gouache is that I recently learned that every single color contains oxgall. Without getting into gross details, oxgall is an animal byproduct that is added to improve paint flow and pigment dispersion. And it might sound familiar because it's very common in watercolor, and it does make an appearance on some of the other brands on my list. Whenever I discover a color or a brand uses this, I have included it in my gouache database. So if you're interested in that, make sure you check it out. Some brands like Holbein only use it in a few colors. So I'm assuming that's because the pigments in those colors need a little extra help <laughs> to get them to flow. But again, in the Horadam gouache, all of the colors contain it. So if you're vegan or just wanting to avoid animal byproducts in your art supplies, you won't be able to use this brand. I go into much more detail about this in the blog post review. But anyway, back to why this gouache is absolutely amazing. Regarding consistency, the paint is the most creamy and silky, and it's gloriously opaque, and it behaves beautifully on all paper types that I've tried. Schmenka told me that they add a little bit of dextrin to the binder, which I think probably helps improve the binder strength, but unlike some of the other brands that use it, like Royal Talons, it's not disgustingly sticky. Mm -hmm. 
So I guess their recipe of gum arabic and dextrin and ox gall creates the perfect marriage to make this amazingly silky smooth paint. But again, it's the most expensive by far, and that's really hard to ignore. If it wasn't for the super, super high price and the ox gall included in the binder, I'd easily rank this gouache as my all-time favorite. But doing this huge gouache brand comparison has showed me that there are plenty of good brands for a fraction of the price who don't use animal byproducts. And I'm not vegan, but I do attempt to avoid using animal byproducts when I can, and having the power of choice is important. I won't be buying any more tubes of this paint for the foreseeable future. I'll just use up what I own. But if price and ingredient are not an issue for you, then trust me when I say this is hands down the best gouache out of the entire group. And last but definitely not least, we have one of the most popular brands of gouache in the world. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I've been using this gouache for almost five years, and there's a very good reason for that. First of all, it's very affordable where I live, and I know that's not true for every country, but when I find a sale, I usually stock up on quite a few tubes of it. Windsor Newton offers a huge list of colors to choose from. And while the majority are vegan friendly, there are a few exceptions, and I've listed those in my gouache database. And if light fastness is important to you, you'll want to double check because they do offer a few pigments that are known to be fugitive or fade over time. But I've been doing light fast tests for my core set of colors for years, and there are no fading problems. The reason I keep using Windsor & Newton for years is that it is so reliable. Straight out of the tube, it has a beautiful, creamy consistency, and the majority of the colors are extremely opaque. Of course, there are the usual pigments that tend to be more transparent, but they have a really high tinting strength because they're packed with so much pigment, so even if you mix with white, you can still mix a vibrant color. I actually find the consistency of this gouache to be very similar to M. Graham. It glides super smoothly. It's not quite as creamy as Schmincke Horidom, but just the fact that I really don't need to add water to fill in large areas is a joy because I love layering and blending into my underlayers. I suppose it does depend on what kind of techniques you use, but the thing is you can really rely on this gouache because it's so opaque. When you finally switch to using a nice high quality gouache, it's really hard to go back. As I always say, you can get used to any consistency of paint. It just takes practice. And so since I've used this gouache for years, of course I'm used to the consistency and I find it such a joy to paint with, but I wouldn't torture myself for years with a gouache I didn't like. <laughs> As a reminder, you can find lots of information in the reviews on my blog, as well as ongoing updates and rankings on my gouache database. So I hope you found this video helpful for your own gouache adventures. If you find a gouache you absolutely love, just run with it, no matter what anyone else says. <laughs> So as I said at the beginning, I have some ongoing nerdy gouache tests that I'm doing because again, I'm just obsessed. One thing is the mold test. I mentioned this in a previous video and I've talked about how you can prevent mold in your own palettes, but since I have all this gouache with me, I decided to do an experiment. I'm watching and monitoring all of the gouache in their own Stay Wet palettes and seeing if any brands are inherently promoting more mold growth than others. 
The first part of this test is just the straight up gouache. After a month of that, I'm going to be painting with each color in these little palettes because that introduces dirty water basically. And then I think that's what's going to actually promote mold growth. So I'm going to be continually updating my gouache database page with the results if you're interested in that. In addition, I'm also doing light fast tests, which will take a long time. To get full results of these, you usually want to have six to eight months. Some colors will fade within a few weeks and others take a lot longer. In addition, some pigments don't really fade unless they're tinted or diluted. So I've tinted every single color from all of my brands and I will monitor this and keep you guys updated on my gouache database. I'll probably do a follow-up video on that in the future as well. What I love about doing this process is that I get to see all of the different consistencies across the different brands, and I get a really good idea of what is out there in the world and on the market. If you haven't seen it yet, I also have a brand comparison of Mia Himi, Arteza, and Karen Dosh, which are considered student grade or entry level gouache brands. So if you don't have a high budget or just want to dip your toes into gouache, you could check those out. But to be honest, you could buy a few tubes of these really high quality brands and spend the same amount of money as you would on a beginner set. And your experience would probably be much better, but I'm not going to tell you what to do. I just want to present you with the facts and show you what the gouache does and you can make your own decisions. And with that, I'm going to leave you to it. I hope you enjoyed seeing all these brands side by side. And of course, I would super appreciate a thumbs up because this video has taken me over five weeks to make. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you all again soon for some painting. Take care.